Tuesday, February 17th, and we're all ice cream. So here's a little something for you to be able to do. Um, you should check your answers to last night's homework. It is on Moodle. Do all the corrections. Have your um, questions ready for me. Or if there's some that you really don't understand, uh, like my little remind message yesterday, um, email me so that I pretty much know uh, what you're having questions about so that I can plan the lesson the court lesson tomorrow accordingly. But we will be going over all of these things. Now, there is also a worksheet for today. It's got about 25 questions on them. A lot of them are reviewed and will be reviewed from last week and this week. And I also want you to finish the worksheet from Monday. There are some word problems and some graphing that I'd like for you to work on. But what I'm going over today are the new concepts. They're not completely new. They are kind of going off over what we've already talked about. And um, one of the types of questions, if you are looking at your worksheet, the new worksheet for tonight, one through five should be reviewed. Uh, six through seven, six and seven are similar to these. And the first thing that you have to do is you're going to multiply them. So when you multiply and you multiply everything underneath the radical, so 6 times 8, so everything stays under the radical, so 6 times 8 is 48. And then if you have n to the 3rd times n to the 5th, the rule is you add your exponents, so you get n to the 8th. And then you have n to the 4th and n to the 6th. Again, you add your exponents, so it is n to the 10th. And then you have p to the 7th times p to the 2nd, which is p to the ninth. Now this is still square root, so what you're going to do is go back and change everything to products of perfect squares. So when you change them to products of perfect squares, we've got 48. Well, you can break it down several different ways, but what comes out is it comes out to be 16 times 3. And 16 is the largest perfect square. And if you do the larger per largest perfect square, it does make it come out quicker. n to the 8th is already a perfect square. So I don't have to do anything to n to the 8th. I don't have to do anything to n to the 10th because it's already a perfect square. Because perfect squares with variables, if it's an even number, it's a perfect square. So now I'm going to take p to the 9th, which is not a perfect square, even though 9 is a perfect square. When it's a regular number, if it's a uh, exponent, it's not. You need to change that to p to the 8th times p to the 1st. And you don't have to write that 1 there. I'm just writing it so that we don't forget about it. So then you look, you go back, and you look at all your perfect squares. And this part should be reviewed. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of n to the 8th is 8 divided by 2, because that's an understood 2 right there. 8 divided by 2 is n to the 4th. n to the 10th is 10 divided by 2, which is n to the 5th. And then p to the 8th, just like n to the 8th, is 8 divided by 2, which is p to the 4th. Then you're going to go back and put everything that was not a perfect square. So we have our 3 is not a perfect square. There's nothing we can do to it. And the only other thing that we have is the p. So we're going to put it under there also. So my final answer with everything simplified down is this. That is everything simple, simplified down after you multiply. The next one, and if you want to pause at any time, pause the video to do any, any of these on your own, I would definitely suggest that. So if you want to do these on your own and then you need to you go back and, and see my work that goes with it, that would pe probably be the best learning uh, situation possible. So when I do these, I'm going to do the exact same thing. 9 times 10 is 90. d to the 5th times d to the 2nd. Add your exponents, which is d to the 7th. e to the 2nd times e to the 9th is e to the 11th. And f to the 5th and f to the 8th is f to the 13th. Now we're going to do the exact same thing as before. 9e can break down to 9 times 10. d to the 7th is d to the 6th times d to the 1st, because d to the 6th is a perfect square. e to the 11th is e to the 10th times e. And f to the 13th, we can break that down to 
s to the 12th times s. Now, once we've multiplied it, this type of thing has already been covered. So this part should hopefully be reviewing other things that we've already talked about. So now we're going to look at all of our perfect squares, which if it's a number, it's like 3 times 3. And this one, if it's a perfect, if it's an even number, it's a perfect square. So we're going to go back and take all our perfect squares. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of b to the 6th is b to the 3rd. Square root of e to the 10th is e to the 5th. And square root of f to the 12th is f to the 6th. And then we're going to go back and put everything else that was not a perfect square back under the radical. So we get 10 d e f. That's going to be our final answer. Then, again, you can pause it if you want to. And we're going to multiply these. We multiply first, and then we simplify. Uh, you could possibly simplify first, but I think it just um, makes it take a little bit longer. Like you could take 12 and break it down to 4 times 3 and then multiply it out. But if the num And sometimes if the numbers get too large, you might want to do that. Or you can just leave it when you put it under the radical. You can just still leave it as 12 times 3 because you're going to have to break it down anyway. But this one works out nicely because we get 12 times 3, which is not that large, which comes out to be 36, which is a perfect square. Then we get a to the 5 plus 4, which is a to the 9th, b to the 5 plus 6, which is b to the 11th, and c to the 9 plus 4, which is c to the 13th. And a lot of these sort of kind of keep repeating. Now, 36 is a perfect square. We want to write a to the 9th as a to the 8th times a, b to the 11th is b to the 10th times b, and c to the 13th is c to the 12th times c. So we take the square root of 36, which is 6. We take the square root of a to the 8th, which is a to the 4th. Square root of b to the 10th, notice I'm looking at all the ones that I just made into perfect squares, b to the 5th, and c to the 12th is c to the 6th. And everything else that was not a perfect square is left under the radical, a, b, C. And that right there is my final answer. Now, the next little topic is not only are we going to do square roots, but we're also going to do cube roots. And I'm not going to take a, a long time with this little part, because we've already talked about perfect cubes before when we factored the, the difference in sums of two cubes. These are my perfect cubes, and if I turned it around the other way, if I took the cube roots, this is what would happen. And for the most part, I want you to know your perfect cubes up to uh, 125, because those are the ones that we're going to be using when we break things down. So if I had the cube root of 24, you can memorize your cube root, and we're going to break it down just like we did the square root. So you're going to break it down to 8 times 3. And the reason we break it down to 8 is because 8 is a perfect cube. So the cube root of 8 is 2, so that comes out to be the cube root. 2 times the cube root of 3, and that would be my final answer. Cube root of 81, well, if you look at your perfect squares, our perfect squares are going to be 27 is a perfect square. So 27 times 3 gives you 81. Square, uh, cube root of 27 is going to give you 3, so you get 3 times the cube root of 3. Just like the perfect squares, except for these are perfect cubes. Now, on this one, um, most of you think of, you want to break that down as 4 times 10, but 4 and 10 are neither one perfect cube. What you want to do now is you want to use your 8, because your 8 is a perfect cube. So 8 times 5 is 40. Cube root of 8 is 2, so it's 2 times the cube root of 5. That would be your final answer. Then when I look at this one, Number's a little bit larger, but the only perfect cube that will divide into this is 125. And if I do 125 times 2, 125 plus 125 is going to give me 250. So if I break that down, the cube root of 125 is 5. So you get 5 times the cube root of 2. And that would be my answer. So on your homework, I will be wanting you to simplify perfect cubes 
or cube roots because that's just a step further than doing square roots, which we've done quite a few of. Now, if you look at these, if you have to do variables, uh, if the variable or the exponent is a factor of 3, if it is a factor of 3, then it is a perfect cube. So if this is a factor of 3, we're going to do the same thing that we did with the square root. So the cube root of x to the third is going to end up being x. The cube root of a to the sixth is uh, 6 divided by 3, which is 2. So that comes out to be a to the second, just like we were doing when it was a square root. So the cube root of n to the ninth, what do you think, is going to be 9 divided by 3, which is n to the third. Because if I took this x and I raised it back to the third power, I did x times x times x, I would get x to the third. So the cube root of x to the third is x. If I took a, a to the second and I did it times itself three times, remember we add our exponents. So 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, so it comes out to a to the 6. So the cube root of a to the 6 is a to the 2nd. Same thing here if I did n to the 3rd times n to the 3rd times n to the 3rd. If we add our exponents, we do get n to the ninth. So the cube root of n to the ninth is n to the 3rd. So this is very similar to what we've been doing with the square roots. And so if I had a problem similar to this, um, all of these are factors of 3. So I should be able to simplify it without a lot of trouble. So we do a to the 6 divided by 3, which is a to the 2nd, b to the 9 divided by 3, which is b to the 3rd, and c to the 12 divided by 3, which is c to the 4th. And that would be my answer because all of those are perfect cubes. Down here we got 15, 9, and 24. And you can pause the video so that you can do the question to see if you get the answer that I get. And if you want to check your answer now, if you paused it, same thing that we did up here. All of these are perfect cubes because they're, they are multiples of 3, and they all have a factor of 3. So what we're going to do here is 15 divided by 3, which gives me x to the 5th. 9 divided by 3, which is y to the 3rd. And z to the 24 divided by 3, which is z to the 8th. And that would be my final answer. Now, sometimes they don't come out as perfect cubes, just like the perfect squares. So if they don't come out as perfect cubes, you need to break them down, just like I did the numbers. So if you have a to the 7th, well, that's not a perfect cube. So we want to break that down to the biggest perfect cube that's closest to 7. So that would be a to the 6th. So we do a to the 6th times a to the 1st. B to the 10th is not a perfect cube, but we can break that down to B to the 9th times B. 13, we can break down to C to the 12th times C. So then we go back, just like we did with the square roots, look at all our perfect cubes, do those first. So the cube root of A to the 6th, 6 divided by 3 is A to the 2nd. The cube root of B to the 9th, 9 divided by 3 is B to the 3rd. The cube root of c to the 12th is 12 divided by 3, which is c to the 4th. And everything that was not a perfect cube will go back under. So the, per the ones that are not perfect cubes, I'll make them blue, are a to the 1st, b, and c to the 1st. So we get a, b, c left underneath the radical. Pause it to see if you can do these by themselves. And then I'll go over them. So these are the next two if you want to try them. And if you've paused it and now you're coming back, here's how we would do n to the 15th, n to the 16th. Well, the closest perfect cube is n to the 5th, a to the, ugh, n to the 15th. And that was messy. Let me get rid of them. So that's going to be n to the 15th. So we do n to the 15th times n to the 1st. N is going to be the closest one to N, to 19 is going to be 18. So we do 18 times N to the 18th times N to the 1st. 
Because if I add these back together, I do get n to the 19th. And then p to the 28th, p to the 28th, 28 is not a perfect uh, cube. 27 is, 9 times 3 is 27. So you're going to break that down to p to the 27th times p to the first. So then we're going to go back, take all our perfect cubes, which are 15, 18, and 27. And for 15, 18, and 27, we're going to do uh, n to the 15th. So 15 divided by 3 is n to the 5th. 18, 18 divided by 3 is n to the 6th. And 27 divided by 3 is p to the 9th. So then underneath the radical is everything that's left over. So we're going to have m, n, and p. Now you may ask yourself, can we only have exponents of 1 under the radical? Well, when it is a square root, we can only have exponents of 1. But we could actually have exponents of 2, as long as they are not 3 or above. Because if they're 3 or above, then that means that we could simplify in a little bit, little bit more. So when we look at this one, it's going to come out a little bit different. We want to break these down again as perfect cubes. So a to the fifth is not a perfect cube. But the largest one that is not greater than that is a to the third. Now, once we break that down to a to the third, we need to have a to the second to get back to adding it up to 5. So 3 plus 2 is 5. Uh, b, to the, b, to the, bleh, b to the 11th, the closest one that we can get to without going over would be b to the 9th. But in order to get back to b to the 11th, we have to have c to the 2nd. c to the 17th, the closest one is going to be c to the 15th, and we need a c squared to go back with it. So like I was talking about before, they do not always have to have just an exponent of, um, of 1 underneath the radical, because this one's going to be a little bit different. I just need to move this one down a little bit. So that when I start to do this one, just like the other ones, I'm going to look at my perfect cubes. These are my perfect cubes, so those should be pretty quick to take out. Uh, a to the 3 divided by 3 gives me a to the 1st, but we don't need to write our 1. b to the 9th is 9 divided by 3, which is b to the 3rd. c to the 15th is 15 divided by 3, which is c to the 5th. And then everything that could not come under, out of, from under the radical stays under. So we have a squared, b squared, c squared. Now, these numbers that are underneath the radical, they don't actually have to all be the same. Like in the last one, they were all 1. Here, they're all 2. They can be different depending. But the number, if it's a cube root, all the exponents should either be 2s or 1. Because if this was a 3 or higher, I could have actually taken out something larger. So if we look at this one, again, you can pause it. I'm going to write these as perfect cubes. So this is going to be x to the 21st times x to the 2nd, y to the 18th times y to the 2nd. This one's going to be z to the 30th times z to the 2nd. Taking out all of my perfect cubes, which are 21, 18, and 30, because I planned it that way. Uh, x to the 21st, 21 divided by 3 is 7. At y to the 18th, 18 divided by 3 is y to the 6th. z to the 30th is 30 divided by 3, which is z to the 10th. Just like the rest of them, everything else that does not simplify stays underneath. So it's x to the 2nd, y to the 2nd, and z to the second. That would be my final answer. And you should be copying all these notes down in your spiral notebook. And the last thing that we're going to look at is if by chance we wanted to rationalize the denominator and it was a cube root. Now we've done these with square roots, and basically what we did was we made the denominator equal to a perfect square. But now we want to make the denominator into a perfect cube. So on this one, this is x to the second. Well, what we want to do is a little bit different than we were doing before. We want to make this a perfect cube. 
So what would we need to add to that to make that the smaller perfect cube? Well, that would be x to the second. And then we would need to multiply the top and the bottom by the cube root of x to the second. So on the top, we would have the cube root of x to the second. On the bottom, we would have the cube root of x to the 1 plus 2, which is x to the third. Now that works out nicely on the top. It's going to stay the cube root of x squared. And like we talked about before, what's the cube root of x to the third? It is x. So that would be my answer. Now, on the next one, if we want to make this into a perfect cube, it's y to the second. So if we want to make it into a perfect cube, we need one more y value to make it a factor or a multiple of 30. So we're going to take the top and the bottom and multiply it by the cube root of y to the first. Now, we don't really need that y to the first. That's just so that I'm helping you kind of remember it. So on the top, we're going to have the cube root of y. And then on the bottom, we get the cube root of y to the third, which made that a perfect cube so that when we simplify it, it's going to be the cube root of y over y. Because the cube root of y to the third is just going to be y to the third. This is very, very similar to what we were doing with the squares. Now, you can pause some of these so that you can do them, and then I will go over them with you, which is just like we do in class. So if you, um, you know, if you like math and um, you are a math student, you are an uh, honors math student, you should be able to try to follow these. Now, if I have y to the fifth, I want to make that a perfect cube. So we know that y to the sixth is a perfect cube, so we need one more y. So we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the cube root of y. Now the top doesn't do anything. It stays as the cube root of y. But the bottom becomes the cube root of y to the 5 plus 1, which is 6. Now the reason that we wanted to make it 6 is because that makes it a perfect cube. So on the top, we're going to have the cube root of y. And the cube root of y to the 6, remember, is 6 divided by 3, which is y to the second. That would be my answer. Again, please pause any of these so that you can go back through and look at them. Um, on this particular one, we want to make that a perfect cube, just like we've been doing. So in order to make it a perfect cube, we want to make this a factor, or a multiple, I keep saying factor, a multiple of 3. So we have 7. We've got to add 2 to that to make it 9. So we're going to do that to the top and to the bottom. And so when we do it to the top, we get the cube root of a to the second. And on the bottom, we get the cube root of a to the ninth. And a to the ninth is a perfect cube. So the cube root of a to the ninth is a to the third. And the top still stays as the cube root of a squared. That right there would be your final answer. So continuing on, because you can have um, more examples. If you feel like you're finished with your examples and you're good, then you really don't have to keep going. So I will not be checking for these particular examples. On this one, we want to make this a perfect cube, so we need one more x. So it all depends. We either need one more x or two more x's. We really don't need any more than that. Now, some of you may think, well, I could simplify this first because I could break this down to x to the 6 times x squared. But sometimes the more you break it down, especially with the variables, the harder it, it actually makes the problem. So on the top, we're going to have the cube root of x. On the bottom, we're going to have the cube root of x to the 8 plus 1, which is x to the 9. So on the top, we're going to have the cube root of x. And on the bottom, the cube root of x to the ninth is x to the third. That right there would be your final answer. Last one that we're going to look at, if we have n to the 13th, well, if we want this to be a multiple of 3, we're going to multiply that by the cube root of n to the second. So we're going to do that on the top and on the bottom, n to the second. On the top, it stays as the cube root of n to the second. And on the bottom, 
this becomes the cube root of n to the 13 plus 2, which is n to the 15th, which is a perfect square. So on the bottom, we're going to have m to the 15 divided by 3, which is m to the 5th. And on the top, we have the cube root of m squared. That would be my final answer. Now, the last little thing that I'm going to have you look at is if we had numbers under the radicals. Now, if you have numbers under the radicals, you're pretty much going to do the same thing. This is like 3 to the first. So if that's 3 to the first, how many more 3s do I need in order to make, basically we're going to do this exactly like the variables. How many more 3s do I need to make that exponent a multiple of 3? See, just like we did if that was x to the first, we would need 2 more. So we're going to do 3 to the second. So on the top, we're going to do the cube root of 3 to the second. Well, on the top, we get the cube root of Go ahead and simplify it. It's the cube root of 9. And on the bottom, we have the cube root of 3 to the 1 plus 2, which is 3 to the third. Well, on the top, since this is a perfect cube, there's nothing I can do to it because 9 is not a perfect cube. If that was an 8, I could simplify it. Now we've got the cube root of 3 to the third. Well, the cube root of 3 to the third is 3. Can't do anything to the 9 and the 3, just like with the square root, so we just have to leave it. Now, you could pause this one, and then we'll go through it, but you definitely need to make sure that you pay attention to this one because I'm going to do this one a little bit differently. What we need to do here is we have 1, 2. We need 2 more to make that a perfect cube. So we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by 2 to the second. So this is going to be the cube root of 2 to the second. Just like we did in the one before, don't leave it as 2 to the second. Go ahead and make that as the cube root of 4. Then on the bottom, we have the cube root of 2 to the 1 plus 2, which is 2 to the 3rd. So on the top, nothing changes because 4 is a perfect square. It's not a perfect cube. So then the cube root of 2 to the 3rd is just going to give you 2. So we're trying to make, instead of trying to make the bottom a perfect cube, a square, we're trying to make it a perfect cube. Now, we have 4. What I pretty much... Every time we have a number that can be written as a perfect square, perfect cube, whatever, what I would suggest for you to do is to take that number and write it as a perfect square. So if I'm writing that as a perfect square, this makes it look just like the variables. If I, have, uh, if I had x to the second, you would know that you would need to have one more x. Same thing here with the numbers. If I have 2 to the second, I need to have one more to make that 2 plus 1, which is 3, which makes that a perfect cube. So on the top, I'm going to multiply that by the cube root of 2. So on the top, just like it's been doing before, if this is, I can't do anything because 2 is not a perfect cube. Then on the bottom, just like before, I have the cube root of 2 to the third. Well, on the top, I'm going to have 3 times, or ugh, the cube root of 2. And the cube root of 2 to the third is going to give me 2. So that would be my answer. Now, on this one, I'm not sure if I did any that had a number on the top, but I'm going to put a number on the top. So I just changed this one just a little bit. So the first thing that I would say to do is to change that 9 to writing it as a perfect square, because 9 is a perfect square. So if you did that, that you would have 3 to the second. Well, if I want to make the bottom a perfect cube, I need to have one more 3, because 2 plus 1 is 3. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the cube root of 3 to the first. Now, on the top, I haven't really had another number up here, but the only thing you're going to do on the top is just put that 3 on the outside, although it makes you have lots of 3s. It's going to be 3 times the cube root of 3, which is fine. Then this one down here is going to be the cube root of 3 to the third. Well, the top is going to stay as 3 times the cube root of 3. And on the bottom, the cube root of 3 to the third is basically just 3. Now, this one has an extra little kink to it. And it's just like if you have a square root. You can't cancel these 3s, but you can cancel these 3s. So if 3 divided by 3 is 1, you can cancel those out. And so your answer to this one is just the cube root of 3. Now, there is a worksheet that I do want you to look at and to try. 
and I will be checking uh, Monday night's homework and today's homework. So we are having class, even though we're not in there. And I apologize, but it makes you think a little bit while you're sitting at home. I know my daughter's just watching movie and movie and TV show after TV show. So hopefully you can watch this little video and uh, learn a little bit of math while you're there. And hopefully these concepts were not too hard. Most of these concepts were uh, just an extension of what we've already talked about and um, just mainly doing them with the key groups. Have a nice rest of the day, and uh, maybe we'll see you tomorrow.